Hey Power Appers, today I've got something really special for you. I published my first independent publisher Power Apps Connector and this one is going to OpenAI. I'm asking the model if it would be interesting to make a YouTube video about that. Yes, it would be definitely interesting. And let's get this started after the intro. So first of all, we're going to look a little bit at what uh, OpenAI is and what models do they have. And afterwards, um, I'm going to tell you how to set yourself up to use this connector. We're going to demo it in Power Automate. And then I have two Power Apps Canvas Apps examples for you. So first of all, OpenAI is a company you probably have heard of. Um, right now in use is a lot of the image generation model DAL E2 uh, alongside models of uh, other companies who do basically the same and they generate images from a prompt, but this model has no API at all. Um, so we're going to look at GPT-3, short for Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3. And it's an auto-regressive language model that uses deep learning. And I have no idea what all of that means. That doesn't mean that we can use the model. So let's look at what we can do with this human-like text the model produces. Uh, first of all, of, of course, this model can do um, writing like news writing and you probably have written news already that were um, that were written by an AI and not by a human author. And this is also really creative and can write fiction. And this thing, as you see on the top, knows actually everything, the whole internet. It was fed by 45 terabytes of just text data um, alongside all Wikipedia, lots of books and lots of random stuff from the internet. And this model speaks actually multiple languages. You don't select a language, you just start talking in a language and it responds in that respective language uh, to you most of the time. And it also speaks programming languages, which you probably know from the ideas tab um, in your Canvas apps editor. And this is powered by GPT-3 as well. So let's first take a quick look at the OpenAI homepage. It takes just a few minutes to set up your account. And to try this, you will need an API key from this website. So you will need an account. And if you want to use this model a lot, this will cost money. But when you register yourself, then you get a three months trial phase and you can actually um, spend $18 in credits and this is actually more than enough to give this a proper testing and have lots of fun with it. So you can find your um, API key right here. And there's your API. We will copy that because we will need it later on. And there is some great documentation around the API. You can definitely check out if you want to add more endpoints to my connector and start teaching the model um, a few things and use your custom model and there is more to explore here. Let's look at the playground because this basically just works like the API. Um, we will give a prompt to the API and will receive a response. This is the main thing that does. So we just give a string in and get a string out. We can set a few properties. The most important property is which engine to use. And if you want to get human-like text, you will probably uh, use most of the time the Da Vinci model. And the other things are really well explained right here. Um, you should take a look of that yourself. So first of all, um, we're going to use this hint text right here, but we will extend it a little bit and look for a tagline for an ice cream shop, including the word rainbow. And then we will get a response, the best ice cream in town and every flavor is a rainbow which sounds really nice, probably as creative as I would have been, but um, really fast and it does make sense. Manufacturing these prompts, so these uh, tasks you have for the API, 
um, is a science in itself. So uh, you should definitely check out these examples right here. And we're gonna look at my favorite example down there. It's Marv the Sarcastic Chatbot. Let's open that up in the playground as well and take a closer look at the prompt. The prompt is a little bit longer and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, first of all, this prompt uses a warm-up and this warm-up helps to set the scene so the model knows what, um, what you expect from the model. And then this part is really important because the model gets infinitely better when you use this technique. It's called few shot learning. You give a few uh, examples to the model, which kind of answers you expect from the model. So it learns from that on the spot and gives you much, much better answer than with a no shot approach. So it has perfectly set us up. We are asking here, what time is it? And Marv answers, it's time for you to stop asking me questions and get a life. That is actually exactly my kind of humor. So I really love that example, but there are 20 other examples that you really should take a look at. And one more thing, the model um, picks up really good that it's in a conversation with you when you use this scheme right here. So you, Colin, Marv, Colin, you, Colin, Marv, Colin, the model just knows then it's a dialogue uh, between you and the model. And yeah, it just uh, can answer a lot easier. So you should definitely, definitely use this technique as well. I headed over to my tenant and into my default environment. And what we are trying right here is uh, setting up the new connection. This is uh, what you will see when you use the connector for the first time. So we will use new connection right here. You don't have to do that manually. If you use it the first time, it will show you. So we're gonna look at the OpenAI independent publisher connector. And this is published to your tenant as well. So everyone who hasn't blocked it by DLP can use it. So we are gonna go right here and you see this was published by me. Really, really cool to have my name uh, up on the power platform on the uh, official product. So, and I gave you many hints because um, you shouldn't get that wrong. You need to write your API key as bearer. So just type it as it is right here, then a blank and then copy in your API key. And the whole thing will look like this, bearer, blank, and uh, no worries, I will delete this API key afterwards and generate a new one. So you can't use this, you have to get your own through the website. And then you click accept and create and it will work, but use the word bearer in front and then a blank and then the actual API key. And we can use that in Power Automate and Power Apps Canvas app. So we will start with Power Automate first and get it going really quickly. Generate a new flow, manually trigger it, and then we look for the OpenAI connector. And this has just one endpoint just the completion endpoint, the most important one. And let's look at what we have to plug in right here. As I told you, the engine, uh, you need to fill it out. Uh, you need to put in a prompt and these are the default values I set. Inform yourself in the playground what they mean and how this all, and how this uh, all works. The default prompt I put in is, what is your favorite animal and why? Tell me also about size and weight of this animal. So we're gonna save this flow and test it once manually. And here we are waiting for the completion. Uh, here's again, of course, you know, flow, uh, what we put in, which parameters we did put in. And this is the output. This is the object we get back. We can uh, look at it right here. So we are not interested in ID object or the created uh, number. Most of the time we are uh, interested in the choices. This is what is coming out of this object. And most of the time we want to have the first choice only. You have to be a little bit careful 
the choices is a new object nested in the response object and we want normally the first one and we want the text property of that. We will look in a second how this works in Power Apps. And the response is my favorite animal is a horse. I like horses because they are big and strong. They can also be very gentle and loving. A horse can weigh up to 1000 pounds and can be up to six feet tall at the sh shoulder, which probably makes sense. Uh, didn't check that numbers, but um, it did everything that we asked for. So pretty nice response. So, so let's look at the first example from the intro, actually using this thing in, uh, in the Power Apps Canvas Apps editor. And let's see how the API call works over there. And first of all, this app is downloadable in the official Power Apps sample GitHub repo. So I'm gonna give you the link uh, up here and down there. Um, it's been checked by Microsoft so uh, that you can safely download it and get started in a few minutes. Um, if you want to set, don't want to set up anything yourself, just put in your API key and this thing should start working. And another thing, if you like the design of this model, you should definitely check out Christine Kolodziewski's, I hope I said that right, um, her blog and search for the Pneumorphic uh, Dark Design Kit because that is what I used building this app. And yeah, I think it came out really nicely. So shout out to Christine. Really nice stuff you put out there for everyone to use and build apps upon. And um, again, let's ask something. What is your favorite movie and then second we are looking at how this is set up my favorite movie is the Shawshank Redemption this is also one of my absolute favorites um, who was the director uh, I think this is correct and let's ask one more thing And that actually sums it up pretty nicely in a pretty short manner. That is the actual plot of the movie. And as you see, this model picks up context just really, really good. I am not asking who was the director of the movie Shawshank Redemption, but I just asked who was the director and the model just knew because it mentioned the Shawshank Redemption earlier that I mean just this and the same thing, of course, with the synopsis. It just picks this up from the messages that I sent earlier. And how do we set this up? We take a look at this text right here. This is the whole prompt I am, I am sending. Again, I'm using a warm up message up here, and then I'm using the notation u colon GPT-3 colon, and I'm telling it that it's named GPT-3, so it picks up that I am talking to GPT-3. And then for each API call we are doing, um, we are looking a little bit deeper in the code uh, in the second demo. Um, but I'm sending the whole conversation as a text. And as I said, a link to the app is in the description when you want to look um, deeper into the app and how the calls are made. And also, of course, how the design was made, if you like that. So let's look at the second example. It's my ultimate sample data generator and I love playing around with this. We can plug in here for which topic we like sample data. And we were we are asking for capitals of European countries right now. Then we get data, we start an API call right here, and we get Paris, Berlin, Rome, Madrid, London back. Then we generate images and replace Chuck Norris in a second right here by beautiful images. These are not provided by GPT-3. This is just the Google image search, but it's a nice touch. I added to the app and it's actually my favorite part going through the different images and yeah, looking at them really, really nicely. And then we can add descriptions. And this is real time right now. So we are looping through each 
object right here and asking for a description of city of Paris, Berlin, Rome, Madrid, and London, and give a short description of all of that. And then we can add a, I call it a sublist, so a nested object right here. And I want to have famous sites in the city of star. And then it loops through everything again and replaces star with the actual name of the city. So we'll get a sublist. And here we get some things, Paris, Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, seems to check out Berlin as well. Um, yeah, so you get perfect sample data you can use in your in your apps and have don't have to uh, take your time yourself or like me you can just sit there and generate sample data for different stuff and learn a lot um, about it and look at beautiful images as well and let's take a closer look how this was done let's look at the first api call where we are generating um, the sample data where we're generating the the cities so how are we calling the open ai connector from power apps canvas apps is uh, this you will of course edit as first in your connectors. So here at data and then the open AI connector. And once again, this is available in your environment as well, as long as you haven't blocked it by DLP. Like I said, there's only one endpoint available, the completion action. Then we have to plug in again, like in Power Automate, the engine. And the second thing we need is the prompt right here. And again, we're using the technique of the warm up first, I want sample data that is separated by semicolons. If we just plug it that way, the semicolon part won't work all the time. It will work sometimes, but not all the time. And with few short learning, we will get this to basically 100% because we tell it with four examples what we actually want. And the fifth example references to the slider, how many do I want and to our topic and just plug in the topic right here. And then um, what I told you in Power Automate earlier, we want the choices object and from that we want the text. Uh, but this is a object that can have uh, multiple records in it. So it's a table. So we need to go uh, to reference to the first, you see these brackets are matching right here first of the choices and then we want the text and then we get a list that looks a little bit like this but there is paris berlin rome madrid london in this list and what we are doing afterwards is we are splitting it by semicolon that's why i set it up that way and want it to be separated by semicolons and yeah we are splitting it Again, these brackets are matching at the semicolon and then we get a, and then we write it to the collections. Um, we are displaying right here. The description is a little bit easier. We are looping through all the sample items and this is the actual collection that is displayed and our call is a little bit shorter described the result with 30 to 50 words. Really short prompt, but seems to work reasonably well. You could probably come up with, with something better, which yeah, does better descriptions, but um, this seems to work for the moment. And this is pretty much the same thing, just the same technique, um, actually using the same prompt, but storing it as a nested object in this collection we are displaying right here. And that's it for today, showing off my first independent publisher connector I'm really proud of with two, I think, really cool demo apps. Um, you can download the first and I basically told you how all the code of the second demo app works. I would like in the comments, um, do you like the demo apps? Did you play around with the chatbot? What are your use cases you came up with? What would you do with GPT-3? See you next time. <laughs>